In the year 1982, there came a naturalized citizen of Liberia, Wambo Dike. You heard a lot about the situation of Numbusi Wambo Dike, and tonight we're going to have a deep briefing on the situation. Uh, deep briefing, that is, and uh, our brother who is a psychologist here is going to tell us more about deep briefing. But that's the time we come around and say, hey, what happened? How did it happen? Who's responsible and what can we do to change it? And what are some of the next steps that we can perform? So, tonight is going to be a deep briefing on the Wamodiki situation. And who's better to explain this than my co-host, Mr. Asoni Sie. Mr. Sie, it's Wamodiki time. Thank you, Mr. Ja. And to our guest here in the studio, it is my pleasure to welcome you in a very warm way and also to our audience following us on Facebook or Cyber Space, as we usually say. And I am comfortably seated uh, in my comfortable seat and our guests are also comfortably seated. And we are here for a debriefing on a Nabodiki mess that we have on our hands. Uh, I will be telling the story very briefly or uh, concisely as possible, and then our guests will be able to fill in. And so those of you who are watching us now on Facebook, hit that share button. Uh, it's going to be juicier for you. Uh, this is what we do. We make it juicier for everybody to have something, uh, you know, to be informed about. And that's the goal. Uh, we, we educate, we elevate, and we promote all things Liberia. So hit that share button as we get started here uh, quickly. But before I gave you that little concise uh, story about Nambo Diki, and the story is once upon a time in 1982, a man called Nambo Diki. That's the story I'll be telling. Hey, you want your brother to hear that story? Hit that share button. But before we get to that story, we have some outstanding people here in studio who are part of the entire conversation about debriefing on Nambo Diki, Nambo Diki Lake. In the house, we want to welcome uh, Eva Sa. Eva, uh, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you for having me. All right. Also, also we, we have, have Mr. Mr. Gibson, Gibson uh, Juru. Juru. He's, He's a, a big, big brother. brother. He's a journalist. He's been around. He's been writing. Some of us follow him. And he is also the host of From the House's Mouth, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much, Christian. and I'm, I'm glad to be here for the second time. All right, and also in the house is Mr. Williamson, Joel Williamson. Uh, Mr. Williamson is a Liberian. He is a member of the Ruling Coalition for Democratic Change, and uh, we talked to him. He said, hey, Nambo Diki gave us Nambo Diki. Don't blame nobody else. Welcome to Focus on Liberia, Mr. Williamson. Thank you. All right, and also in this house is Mr. Steve Bolle. Mr. Bole is here and we'll ask him who is responsible for the number dicky mess we got on our hands. He says no one else than the president. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Mr. C. And another powerful letter in the house is Ms. Constant Dopo. Ms. Constant Dopo, please make adjustment. Let the people see you. We can only see your hair. We want to see your beauty. Uh, Steve Bole is here. I don't want him to come after me. He told us that Liberian women are the most beautiful. So uh, show, show us that beauty. beauty. Show okay. us that beauty. Let us see it. Yeah, uh, maybe you just need to make adjustment to your computer monitor. All right, it's much better now. And don't, don't face out with face straight. And, uh, let's see it. Better here? Yeah, it's better there. So uh, at this time, we want to welcome you, uh, Mr. Stropo. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. OK, thank you very much, Mr. Anthony Sia. Uh, 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 Costa, you, you, we need to, you need to still adjust your camera. We want to see the, We don't even see your mouth. It's just top of your head. Okay. I'll work from here. All right. All right. Right yeah. there. That is better. That is much better. This is the Mistress Dupo that we know. Uh, I don't want Memphis Dupo to come after me and say, oh, Mr. Sia, how could you do that? Anyway, let's get to business here. Uh, so we have just welcomed our guests, Mr. Dad. Uh, we will now ask them in one minute or less, you know, to say a little about themselves, starting with you, Eva. And, and, and please include, if you have any party affiliation, please let us know <laughs> so that I will people can understand where you're coming from. Oh, my name is Eva Zahar. I'm, a, uh, of course, a Liberian. I don't have any political party affiliation, so I talk freely, say what I want. Anybody's doing 
whatever in the political parties I say it. Um, I've been actively involved in Liberian politics over the last two years um, since we I came in. But before that, I would say things here and there, but I, I realized it's time to really discuss Liberian politics and see how we can change the dynamics. Thank you. And uh, welcome to you, uh, let's say ladies and gentlemen, right? So let's start with you, uh, Mr. Strippel, also. Uh, I am Constance Bias Wendoku. I hail from Sino County. And I'm a sedition, and not just a sedition or stone sedition, but Liberia first. So I'm not a blind, you know, sedition and loyalist. But I speak the facts, I stand by certain principles but I support the society to the highest and also support my country. And, and we believe you said the entire system is to be blamed for, for Nambu Diki, is that right? Right. Thank you. And let's come to you, Mr. Steve Bolley. Uh, I, I think you are the youngest in the house. Uh, don't envy Steve uh, to the other guests, please. Uh, a little bit about you, less than one minute. Thank you, Mr. C. Uh, every time I have the opportunity to speak to the Liberian people, I like to acknowledge them and make the public and the world know that the Liberian people are the most important people on earth. I believe that's a fact. I also believe that um, Liberian women are the most beautiful women on earth. And that's another fact because you and uh, Mr. Jai and Steele here can attest to that fact because both of you are married to Liberian women. That is another fact. Um, that being said, I, um, I'm a Liberian, um, a native Liberian at that rate. Um, I hail from both Lofa County and Maggie County. I am excited to be here as always. I am um, a doctoral student. I got one more year to go. I'm glad to be here and hopefully we can contribute to this conversation. I'm excited. Thank you so much. Thank you. And coming to you, Mr. Joel Williamson, just a little bit about you, last than a minute, please. Joel Williamson, uh, Liberian. Uh, been in the vanguard of Liberian politics for over a quarter of a century. I've been a member of CDC since 2009. And uh, I'm resident in the United States. I'm glad to be here. I uh, think it's a very important conversation and I will lend my own idea or my perception of what I speak about to this discussion. Thank you for having me. All right, and uh, the journalist in the house, who job I'm trying to take? <laughs> you are welcome. I'm old now. You have to take over. All we right, should be, go ahead. We should be retiring. Yeah. My name is Gibson Giroux. I've been a journalist since 1989. I, I never joined a political parties in my entire life. I voted for Samuel Doe in 1986. I don't know if I voted because I believe in the politics, but I know I voted because you were a crime man. And I have to admit to that. But I've never voted for any other political party. I've always been a journalist. I never felt, I never felt that I should sub, you know, be subservient to any political party. And people don't understand me because I think I speak what I see. If it's wrong today, I'll talk about it. If it's right tomorrow, I'll say it. And people think that I should be maybe straightforward or maybe one-sided. That's their judgment. I can tell you for sure, if I see it, I will, I will say it. I will not bite my tongue. All right. We want to thank you for that brief introduction of uh, folks in cyberspace. Before I can tell the story, I will uh, have Mr. Jad to uh, say something, and then I will tell that story that happened in the year 1982 about a man called Dickey. Mr. Jad. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you to yet another edition of Focus on Liberia. On Fridays, we normally have our debate Friday or our innovative series. Tonight is the kind of debate, but we call it a debriefing. Normally, when something like the Nambu Diki mess occurs, we have debriefing to see what went wrong, who we can hold responsible, and how we fix the situation. So we have a situation that we want to talk about. Mr. C.A. is going to give us the rundown of what took place, and we can have our panelists to chime in. We also will be looking at who's responsible, and each of our panelists will come up to see who is responsible for the Nambu Diki situation we have on our hand. So to uh, get the ball rolling, I know most of you have followed the story, but we'll give Mr. C.A. Uh, two minutes to just give us a rundown. What happened, Mr. C.A.? 
Thank you, Mr. Jaya. Once upon a time in the year 1982, a man of Nigerian descent called Austin Dubusi Nambodiki got naturalized according to him, but he did not move to Liberia until the year 1988, he said. He also said his father came to Liberia in 1946. His father got naturalized at some point, thereby giving him right to a Liberian citizenship up at automatically. But yet, he naturalized in 1982. Fast forward, he has carried himself as a Liberian over the past 40 years. He attended the Louis Atto Grand School of Law. He became a member of the Liberian Bar Association. He was given permission by the Supreme Court to practice law. So he has been a lawyer in Liberia. He landed several key positions in government. He got appointed by President George Manawia to be the chairman of a committee to investigate the scandal that was reported by Global Waste and Noka. He also got appointed to investigate money that went missing, that was due to money at the Agricultural Ministry. He landed another appointment from President Weir as good governance chair, a position to which he was now confirmed by seven ninety days and got appointed again by President Weir at LACC boss, a position he occupies as we speak. As though that was not enough, he got another appointment from President Weir this time around to be the boss of the Liberian National Election Commission. Abrise rose. Liberian started questioning who is Nambu DC. He went on the media blaze. He told Liberian, though his knee is ugly, but he is a Liberian. He got naturalized. His father was a Li Liberian because his father got naturalized. And I, his father even served in the Tottenham administration. As a consultant, his father worked for Firestone as also a employee, an employee. And so the questions about Nambu Diki's citizenship raised Asbra because he went on the media blaze to tell Liberia, Liberians he is a patriot and that he will be able to do what Liberians expect anybody who occupies that position. The confirmation came. Nambu Diki showed up on day one. Still, the issue of citizenship lingers. He was asked, where is your citizenship? Where is your certificate? He answered, I have it, I didn't bring it. The next day, day two, he shows up with a certificate just for it to be questioned. On the certificate, we have all along known Mr. Nambodiki to be going with the name Austin Dubusi Nambodiki. But on that certificate of citizenship he presented, it carried the name Austin. The date of birth in his passport is 1965. But in the citizenship certificate, we see a different birth year, 1963. Is he telling the story? He was pressed. Why do you have two birth dates, Mr. Nambodiki? He answered, I don't control what go on my document. We have a Nambodiki problem on our hands. In no time, the Senate halted the confirmation hearing. The chairman of the Senate committee responsible to confirm him, J. Meton Tiaje, halted the confirmation and asked that he be escorted because he provided information that were filled with social inaccuracy, inconsistency, and discrepancy. He was escorted by the Sajia arm. That is the rise and fall of a man called Namodiki, sometime got naturalized in 1982. That is my story. And to you, our guest, that's what I know. I don't know why you know. So, folks in cyberspace, that is the story about the man Namodiki. So, let's get started here quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, are always in Liberia or everywhere, people say, starting with you, Mistress Constant Dropo. You are a stalwart of the uh, Mante Congress for Democratic Change, you guys refer to that. What do you know about the story? Uh, first and foremost, I would like to say a big thank you to the Liberian people. Mm -hmm. Our democracy is very young, and I can see that it has been put to test, and the Liberian people are saying our eyes are open. There is no more that we can just take anything that is thrown at us. With that being said, Oh, I don't think Mr. Nakibusi uh, status is or being he a naturalized citizen is what is questionable. It's his integrity. Anybody that is a Liberian naturalized or born can hold such position. But Mr. Nakabusi, 
he gave a lot of conflicting information and the Liberian people are saying we elected President George Weah. We gave him a mandate. We want change. We are tired of being in poverty. We are tired of bringing other people that we just, you know, take away from the country. They do not bring anything. So the Liberian people raised their concern and the Senate was able to listen. So my president did nothing wrong. He appointed the, the, the man because the man presented document that, that was, I mean, credible before. And then when it, when it was time for him to explain himself, he could not. So the president did the right thing and withdrew him, his nomination. Thank you. And let come to you, uh, Eva. What's your part of this story? What, what piece you want to add? Any missing piece that you want to add? Well, I mean, you touched upon it a little bit. This man has been in several um, key positions, even um, at the LACC and, and, and other places, and nobody has properly checked any of his documents. The system has not, I mean, you know, even though we had a war and everything, but through all his previous um, um, nominations for the positions, nobody scrutinized any of his documents. Nobody um, looked at the credibility of any of his documents. So basically for 20 years, this man has slipped through the cracks and has exposed our system for what it is. And we have to lay, for me, I lay it at the feet of everybody. I lay it at the feet of the president. I lay it at the feet of the Senate. And I even lay it at the feet of the Liberian people. Our system is broken, especially our election, our electoral system, and it needs to be fixed. So not even with this guy um, naturalization question, or some of the other people who have credibility questions or who have corruption in their past or who have moral issues that we never question and we nominate them and put them in positions and then they end up stealing, they end up doing what's wrong. Thank you. And let come to you, uh, Mr. Williamson. Uh, you heard the story as I uh, told it. Um, any piece you want to add? We're not going to your position on the debriefing, but let, let, let gather all the pieces on the story. You know, what, what missing piece or where, where you want, want to pick it back? back. And, and if you don't have, and if you don't have anything to, and if you, the, like I always said, you know, the, uh, Mabudiki's problem is a manufacturing of Mabudiki himself because he filled out that application on the day he filled it out. He knew that he was misrepresenting the truth. And I know I was in 1982, our country was in a vulnerable position, having just experienced, you know, after the cool two years, people took advantage. Thanks to the RGP William uh, Forum, they have a, a newspaper where it, the headline reads 200 bogus naturalization in 1982. Yeah. But I thought the uh, I thought the the problem yet yeah, is Mwabuki. He knew exactly what he was doing. Let's remember, before CDC came to power, Mwabuki was practicing law in Liberia, a, a, a thing that only a Liberian citizen should do. So when so I, I, all along, nobody looked at it because Mabudi represented something he passed through the system. So I don't want to blame anybody right now. I want to blame Mabudi. I want to focus on his impropriety. That's my position. Thank you. So I will explain that further as we go further why I have that position. Thank Before you. I, finish, I thought the president has the right to appoint any naturalized citizen to a, a position that the constitution affords in that prerogative. Thank you, Joel. And, and and again, folks, we are focusing on the story about the man Nambudiki. How you know the whole thing unfolded, the story he told, and up to this point. So let's put the messy pieces together. I can come to you, Mr. Juru, quickly. Thank you very much. Look, I've already made my position clear that I agree with Mrs. Doko that this thing is about credibility issue mm -hmm. on the legal aspect. I cannot say that this man violated the naturalization law of 1974, because if you look at the, the situation at the time, in 1980, when the PRC took over, they suspended all the laws. 
and they instituted a decree. And the decree were used to navigate all our legal processes. All the judges were using the decree to, to decide cases. So, if, and the decree ended in 1985 before the International Assembly. So from 1980 to 1985, our country went through a military junta that used decree to rule our country. During 1982, when the decree was still being ruled, Mwapu DK went to the court to naturalize himself at the age of 17. The court should have known better and said, no, my friend, you can't. Our law says you cannot. But the law, the court allowed him, according to him, to bring a letter from his father to naturalize as, at the age of 17, which for me, the burden is not on him. The court made a decision and he cannot answer for the court decision. That's one. Number two, we all, I also have serious problem with the way the, the senators address nominees. And I think uh, what would the kid perform very poorly, but most of his confusion or most of the antagonism coming from the senators, for instance, they were saying on the floor, why the moment when they mess it, our law is it, trouble. What law? Who are you law? Who are you get contrary before you got about your law? Those were very demeaning, disrespectful way of confirmation hearing. And that added to the probably the men's confusion. I can understand that. It was a lot of stressful day for him. But he messed up. But I blame the Senate for that because he had gone there once and they failed to check him. And now the problem. Thank you, Mr. Gerald. And it looked like uh, nobody's really adding any missing piece. So we're going to go right into it unless uh, Mr. Bully has any missing piece to add on the story that was told by Mr. C. Other than that, we're going to go around the room and uh, tell us exactly, we know now what, this, what happened. We want to know who's responsible for this situation. As Mr. C. referred to it, the Namodiki mess that is in our, on our, in our hands now, who or what is responsible? And at this time, we want to start with Mr. Bode. Thank you, Mr. Ja. Um, I'd, I'd like to, to, to go back a little bit to the, first, to the very first question to establish something that's, I think that is critically important on the story that was narrated by um, your co-host here. Um, I think it is important for us to understand, first of all, the role of the president um, in collaboration with the role of the Senate as well. One of the, one of the, one of the, the things that caught my attention on this whole appointment, I, I don't want to butcher his name, so I might not call his name, I might just use the word um, nominee for the sake of this conversation. And so um, one of the things, Austin, okay, one of the things that, that caught my attention on Austin was why would the president keep pushing him, I would say, upstairs? Why? In less than 90 days after he came to the, to the um, Good, Go Good Governance Commission as chair, he was, he was nominated to come to LACC again. But not only that, why is so much interest in him? Why is the president so much interested in him? And that's why I said, I blame the president um, instead of anyone else, considering not only that the president could have saved himself from this noise or from this disgrace and shame, but I also think that um, the president had the responsibility with all the power allocated, the money and everything to do proper vetting of this man, to know who he is. And, and, and based on some of the things that um, I've read over the past few days, I've come to understand that the president, he knows this guy, not just a few days ago. He knows him. And as a matter of fact, it was referenced yesterday, and I was researching it, it was referenced that this guy and the current justice minister, when 2017 election, there was a lot of discrepancy. This guy, uh, Mr. Austin, and the current justice minister, Mr. Musa Din, both of them serve as lawyer to the president. So that means the president knows this guy, this guy to some extent. And he pushed this guy on the Liberian people, knowing fair way that he knew that this guy has lots of discrepancy. Not only that, this guy is a fraudster in my personal view. So I put the blame on the president based on that. He did not do justice to the Liberian people. I think he was in cahoots with this guy, knowing what he was doing. Considering, I was listening to um, one of the representatives this morning as well. Uh, I think Mr. Nathan, Nathan Slay or something, I don't want to misquote his name as well, but he stated that he's on record as one of the CDC representatives 
recommended to the president that the president withdraw Mr. Austin's nomination from the get-go. The president refused. And the president only withdrew this nomination when this whole noise came out, this entire tobacco came out, when he could have withdrawn this nomination. He deliberately refused. So I blame the president fully and 100% for keep pushing this guy through our system after he has navigated his way through our system and reached up to the president. The president did not do any good vetting. The president did not do due diligence. And the president wronged the Liberian people. I will call on the president to make a public apology to the Liberian people. That is my stand. <laughs> okay. Could I stop? Yeah, yeah. You are, you go. Do I, yeah, you, you, so, so, uh -huh. so let me let me first of all thank my brother Gibson Cheru. You made a very great point, and I want to go back to that. The the kind of immaturity held by some of our senators in the line of questioning was was something that I noticed also. Another thing I want to bring to attention: we do not know what age that Mwabutiki had on his application that he presented. It was that he was seventeen. I believe it was the sixty three that he had on his uh, LU application, the inconsistencies of his date of birth is his own making. It's not anybody. The second thing here is I wonder, I wonder then, the president's appointing somebody three, four times to a position is constitutionally is prerogative. It's constitutional is prerogative. Let's bear in mind, when they were vetting him, they were vetting him based on his qualification. His citizenship seems settled. The fact that he was practicing law in Liberia, admitted to the Bar Association by the Supreme Court, belonged before President William became president, before CDC came to power. So to hear somebody say they're blaming the president 100% because of that, it's kind of ridiculous. Second thing here is, Nobutiki did not, Nobutiki did not represent uh, uh, CDC. It was Musa D and, and Councilor Tapla Dixon. The only thing that, that uh, Mabudiki did, he, he, he represented snow in, in, in the bombing County issue. But the, the, part, the point I want to make here is, as a CDC, I was against Mabudiki's uh, nominee because I, did, I thought he had less than stellar character to bring to the, the NEC. Mr. As Williamson. As a CDC and ardent supporter of President Gap, I was against the, the nomination. Not because I thought the president did something unconstitutionally. I just thought the, 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 the nominee was flawed. That Mr. was my, so, my position from the beginning. Mr. Williamson. Yes, I'd like, I like to respond. I'd like to respond to the the statement Mr. Bolin made and also disagree with him very seriously. And this is one of the serious uh, okay. Oh, hold on, Mr. Mr. Jero. So as we are going around the room to see where you stand, who you think is responsible. So Steve has said his side. Mr. Williamson, please go ahead too and tell us who is responsible. And, and then we can go around the room. Oh, hold on, hold on, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williamson. Okay. Yeah. What I'm saying is uh, let's state our position on who's responsible for the one with Dickie mess, and then we can go around the room again for the back and forth. So Complete your statement. Let's see who's responsible. So, uh, am I am I continuing? Yeah, you're concluding okay. in less than a minute. Who's okay, responsible? I'm concluding to say that this whole episode and debacle was initiated by Mwabudiki because he filled an application, and I will blame him for this. He was not fair. That's my position. Yeah, Mwabudiki is to be blamed for this whole thing. That is my position. Uh, I would have thought maybe if I would ever blame other than him, will be this, the, the, the vetting. But again, Mabudiki is to be blamed, not anybody else. One of the main things, and when um, um, Dennis, you guys put it in the chat room, one of my, my question about this whole process is we need to look at, into our constitution because here, for especially for the appointment to these autonomous um, um, institutions, you have people that are appointing that might benefit from these um, from from appointing these people. The president can benefit from having the right person that he wants to have in this in this position. The senators can benefit from having the right person they want to have in this position. So we're here talking about uh, uh, 
Wabudiki, but if this was also if if this was besides him being a li Liberian citizen, you guys would probably they would have probably approved somebody that the president put there that he, when it came time for elections, would be able to use that person because the the president appoints those at the NEC, and he also has oversight over it. So how is that institution? an autonomous institution that does not have any conflict of interest for anybody to be able to manipulate it and do what they're doing for it. So I think we're talking on the wrong subject right now. We need election reforms to fix our system instead of worrying about who is appointing who to where and being able to use that system and the Senate has to go back and forth to figure out who is what. That's, that's my position on it. We have a system that is broken, period. All right, let's come to you, uh, Mr. Dovo. What's your position as to who is responsible for this number of documents? Oh, thank you very much. And I, my position is clear. I will later on address the issue with Steve Bode, that is my president. I totally disagree, and that's injustice to the president. I totally disagree. I blame the system. Reason being, I know they come on this show, people come on this show and they talk out everybody and they talk about their mini girl, Ellen Johnson Salif. But Ellen Johnson Salif, government, she was one of those that did the reform after the 1980 coup with Emma Sawyer and every one of them with the constitution. This man has been in government from JJ's Robert time, I would say. He just got appointed by the president. And it is this government now that people's eyes are beginning to open because sedition are speaking the truth. So I totally disagree with Mr. Bode. I blame the system. The same reason why you have chaos in the Senate that's stopping other people from being confirmed. And the very people, Liberian people, will say yes. They are doing the right thing. We allow people like that to take position in the country. And then when it comes to the president, because he's a weir or because he's from CDC, you will have men like Steve Bullet coming after the president and blaming the president. Whereas Ellen Johnson Selig appointed someone who ran on her ticket as election commissioner and he served for how many terms? His term just got over. I never heard anybody talking about it, but it is CDC-led government. I blame the system, and I just want to dismiss this issue that people have that they are only blind loyalists in CDC. CDC people are figureheaded people. No, I want to dismiss that, and I say the system that the people put in place since 1847 has failed the Liberian people, and I know my president is here to promote change, I call on my president to do those things that he's doing. He is the man that opening Liberian people's eyes from 1847 to now. Thank Liberian you. People, nothing. Constant, just before, just before I let you, oh, when you say the system, what are you talking about? Is the president part of the system? No, you cannot say the president is part of the system. They man was just elected. Your system that, okay, wait, your system that you had, that you had before he came in, and he is trying to reform. He's bringing about reform, reformation. He is, he is bringing about reformation. You people, other people were there, the so-called educated people, they just had it for everybody to chop, 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 so no one spoke. And now they are not chopping, so they are creating issues. Thank you. Let's go to Mr. Gibson right Jero on who's to blame. <laughs> Mr. Juraho, Mr. Juraho, you're not gonna blame me. No, I'm not gonna blame you. Let's I know the people who are watching, most people will rush to judgment because that's what Liberians do. When you are taking a position, they do not lend their ears, they do not lend their attention to you. I blame the Senate because this man had the opportunity for the first time to be checked. Every other thing we have been talking about, they are not scrutiny opportunities. They may register at the University of Liberia. It's not a scrutiny institution. Anything you present to them, they're not going to go after you to go scrutinize it. Even in America, how many of you have not presented? How many people, not you guys are here. 
I know several people who prevent, presented fake university graduate programs to, to go to colleges here. The colleges here don't go and go scrutinize you. Only these few days they are doing it because they're too rampant. They buy association. Once the men register and graduate from the law school, the buy association is not on a responsibility by law to go and follow up the men, the men credentials. Oh, are you a Liberian? That's not their place. It's not their responsibility. So the men joined the buy association. The men presented that same document to the Supreme Court. And according to the Supreme Court Chief Administrator, Mr. Andrews Mann, who is also a lawyer, the Supreme Court does not investigate whether you are a citizen or not a citizen. Once you present a document, they rule on the basis of that document. And they rule that he is a citizen. And so he started to practice. This man was appointed as good governance commission. He did not go for confirmation hearing. And then the president sent him over to LACC. The man went for confirmation hearing. These same senators, they have the responsibility to scrutinize the main document. Are you a citizen? You want to go and take care of our uh, anti-corruption uh, 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 problem. You are the one going to be the governor of our anti-corruption program. Are you a citizen? The man presented his credential from the from the Supreme Court, the same document that he presented recently to the student. He presented to them in the last confirmation. They did not question it. They let this man pass. Now the man comes back because a lot of people, including the opposition uh, lawmakers, are now championing the cause now. They are the one making noise all over the place. So they are all afraid now for, for re-election because if this man is a Nigerian and you re and you confirm me, you go, you're going to lose your election. So they all now shine their eyes. Look at what happened at the, at, the, at the place there. Some of them were not even going on the issues. Some of them were going personal. Some of them were almost insulting the man. At the time the man appeared before you, before, at the time the man appeared before you for the first time, if you have saved us all of this, you will have called a long time and will not be, will not be in this kind of situation today. So they feel to do their job because they were after some pecuniary gains, some kind of envelope pass, and they didn't even look at the man's resume. They didn't look at the man document. They said, oh, my man, my man, let's confirm the man. And they confirmed the man. Now the same thing has come to haunt us. So we want to blame the president. We want to blame everybody else now. They are responsible because every, everywhere else the men had gone from the beginning, they were not scrutinized institutions. The only scrutiny institution that he went to, they passed him for the first time. Now they have come back to, 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 to back out. Thank you. Mr. 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 Jero. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Jero. Yeah, Mr. Bole, go, go ahead. And we'll, and we'll... Do you have a question? What, 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 no one, uh, Mr. Bole. Well, I, um, I'm glad that, you know, um, the, the conversation is, 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 is very stimulus. And I like the fact that we can stick with the issues. And, and but let, let's let's get to something here that let, let me let me come to something here that Mr. Juru said, and I would like I would love to to incorporate the rest of the panel members into this. Um, one of the questions that keeps running to my mind is the system did not select Mr. Austin from the LACC to present him again to the Liberian people or to the Liberian Senate. The system did not do that. So let us let us let us go away from the idea of the system. The system did not do that. The president did that for the second or the third time, we will see that uh, there is a pattern here of the president being attached to this man. I don't want to go into, um, into the president's, maybe have some kind of interest with him or not. I don't want to dive into that now. I want to speak with the facts here that the president has consistently appointed this man. Now let's go to Mr. Jeru's point that he said, uh, maybe there was some kind of benefit from the Senate that might have led to um, them not scrutinizing uh, Mr. Austin from the get-go, which was confirmation for the LACC. I would have to agree with him. Let's let's take that scenario. Who, who, on whose behalf was the envelope passed? Who initiated it? That is a question we need to investigate and we don't have time, but here is, here is my point. Here is my point. My major point here is, if the Senate did not scrutinize this man that time because they benefited, and the Senate decided, to, the Senate decided finally, we screw up. We want to do the right thing this time around. We want to hold this man kind of, we want to check mid him, which is in the constitution as part of the Senate's responsibility. If you check Article 54, it is there. Now, if the Senate decide to do that and the Senate comes up and say to the president, this man you've sent over 
is uh, we have some credibility issue and his naturalization issue. We scrutinize it. He cannot meet this. Don't you think that is a disgrace to the president for not doing due diligence? And I'll say again, I stand with my position that the president needs to apologize to the Ladurian people for consistently, consistently. Remember the president brought this man in when the president took over? This man was appointed twice on two different commissions to check and balance, do this, do that, as Mr. Antony C. has said earlier. But then he brought it again to the, to the, to the GG, to the, to the Good Government Commission, then he brought it to the LCC. This was going to be actually the president's fifth push for this man to insert himself into our democracy, which I, I thought from the get-go, the very first day, I said it. I said, this is risky, this is dangerous, and this man is a pathological lawyer, liar. If the president approves him and brings him up to the Senate again for a second confirmation, the president is doing disservice to the Liberian people. So the president needs to apologize to the Liberian people. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank Let you. me respond to Mr. Boli. Can I respond to Mr. Boli because he called my name yeah. specifically? Please. Can I? Yeah, quickly. All right, Mr. Boli, thank you very much. You see, one of the problems we have with our intellectual community is in our inability to go beyond the ordinary. Because put down what I said, it is saying exactly what you say. So I would like you as an educated man to go beyond the water side analysis. Right now, let me ask a very quick question. Yes and no question. If Mr. Costa were, if you were president right now, would you give Mr. Costa a, a, an appointed position? Yes or no? Yes, yes, quick. Mr. Joe? Mr. Mr. Bullet. Yes, yes or no? I don't want you to explain. No, I, I, you, I, but you are not okay, going to trap okay, me. Don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. It has to be a Okay, don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. You don't want to trap me. I don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. Don't answer the question. You want to trap me. Okay, forget it. Don't answer the question. Can I say something? Hold on, Constant. Jerry Jer Jer is on the floor. Let me finish. I think Jerry is, go Jer is going somewhere with this. Jerry, I think he's exactly. going somewhere with this, please. Exactly. The reason I ask yes and no, every Liberian today believe that Costa is a Liberian. If Costa were to be appointed today, the way they treated Nwabudike, they would not treat Costa like that. The last time I checked, Costa has not naturalized himself at the age of 21 or above. Costa is not a Liberian yet. The, the law says, if you have one parent who is a foreigner, if you have one parent who is a Liberian, you are not a Liberian until you declare your intention at the age of 21. Any of you on this panel tonight, do you have record that Costa has gone to the court to regularize his status? My answer to myself would be no. But I bet you, if Mr. George Will had appointed Costa now to be the Minister of Information or uh, whatever, the Senate will pass it without asking a citizen question. Mr. Jerry, hey. yes, I don't want you to get on that slippery slope. It uh, is not slippery. It is very right. Mr. Because, Mr. Mr. Ja? Yeah, so, hey. the, no, because uh, I, I think, and, and this is a question for those who don't blame the president, I think uh, appointing someone is not just uh, arbitrary. You have a vetting committee. You have a process. Do, do you do what? What do you think the process of uh, the president appointing someone look like? That's exactly where I'm going. The the process of appointment. You know, there is something in uh, in law they call normal uh, normality assessed. That's what we call it in law. Normality assessed. Normally, that's what lawyers are hired to do the ordinary thing. There is something, Ja. You see me now. You call me a librarian. When I come to United States, I'm a librarian. I bring any document. You not question it because there's something called a, a normality assessed in law. You not assess it because you know you already know Gibson is a librarian. You have the feeling they may have been working, they've been doing job, they've been doing things. So you don't have the critical mind. So based on that, the president, I'm not even taking the blame away from the president as much. Okay, I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is, if you blame the president because he appointed a man, therefore he is the one that caused the trouble. I don't think so. When a man won a case recently with, uh, with the defense minister, the former defense minister, everybody was praising the man. Yeah, they, everybody praising the man. Go on Facebook. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. They were praising the man who was not a librarian, who was the director of the, of the uh, anti-corruption commission. We need a case against another librarian. Before, let's go to the, let's go to the, uh, hey, we'll let me, let me, yeah, me, but, but, yeah, but before I leave Jeru alone, I want you to tell me 
what portion of the blame does the president and we say president is not just an individual the office of the president that's supposed to do this vetting what portion of the blame do you give the president mr gerald okay the president will take 30 percent thank you yeah yeah let me let me just say this though on that same description that the jerry was giving about the normal assist of that idea and you're saying to me and our two female panelists here said the system is to be blamed. If we're saying that the uh, the Liberian Bar Association in the Supreme Court is not a, an entity of scrutiny, and they will not check who, when, they, when that position or, practice, or that occupation of practicing law in Liberia is only reserved for Liberians, then this guy is practicing law in Liberia long before president comes. On that same tour of everybody assuming he's a Liberian citizen. Therefore, when the president appoints him to the position, there is nothing to, there was nothing contrary to that prior to that appointment. So the vetting that the president's office and team will be doing will be based on character, will be based on ability to serve. His citizenship will not come up. It will not come up because of that, of that same assumption. Let's say it was wrong, but to blame them, I don't know anyone else who were, who were calling him. Mr. Williamson? Any, anyone else ever said this man was not a Liberian citizen? You were practicing law in Liberia. Mr. Williamson? That's only, that's only like for Liberian citizens. Now, let's come to the point of trying to, for me, as a CDC, the very first day his name came up, I said, I don't think Mabutiki is the right person for this position. I wish the president three, four days ago, I called, I put it on my Facebook page. And why was your reason? My reason was a less than stellar character. What it's do like you know? Go to the MV Lawrence case. Mm -hmm. In the MV Lawrence case, as a Supreme Court, the shipping line, mm -hmm. they accused him for putting false documents up. That's a history there. And okay. bringing that kind of character to NEC impugns the integrity of NEC. That's my position. I didn't think his citizenship was a question until later on, when I begin to see the facts develop. Now, uh -huh. I want to uh -huh. ask you. And but how can you not blame the president and you're blaming Namodiki himself when you are saying I'm that? Blaming Namodiki himself because Namodiki is the one who filled up the application. Okay. Namodiki was the one. Let me say, let me finish with this. Yeah, in America, I would call with George Bowley and, and Tom, what were you? When they were and other people who were who document was was caught that they lie on the document. Did they blame the US? Did, 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 did the US government blame the, the system yet? Or they blame the individual for lying on the on the application? Wouldn't the individual knew he lied on his application? Let's let's be real here. Nobody knew he knew that. Wabutiki knew what he did. The inconsistencies where his date of birth is his to make. So we can want to blame. And I would side on if I would blame anybody then other than him, I would side with the ladies and say the system. Because for us to have a bar association or the Supreme Court that considers another position, not an entity to scrutinize and so anything passes, that's not. That's not a, 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 a good thing to say anybody can present a law, a, 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 a naturalization paper, you can't do anything by it, but admit them in the bar. And so if they did that, and if they did that then, that's where this whole thing was messed up. And that's why the Liberian National Bar Association is now trying to fix it and go back and say, let's, let's look at this, the paper we should have looked at first. But again, blame the president as much as you want to blame. That's what he, he's president for. But it is... Appointing this guy three or four times, he broke no law. He broke no law. It is prerogative. I can say to you, why is President Trump uh, Pompeo, Pompeo been in three positions? Mr. Williamson. <laughs> Homeland Security. Uh, Mr. Uh, Williamson. And now he's a uh, he's a uh, Secretary of State. Uh, I don't know if he's hearing, Mr. Williamson, are you hearing them? Can I say something? I don't know. I don't know if he's hearing you. No, Mr. Ati, Ati, pause. Yeah. Mr. Williamson, uh, when we're calling your attention, I'll pay attention to, uh, we have to share the time. Uh, let's come to you, uh, Mistress Dwopo. Something about this Nambo Dickey story. Mm -hmm. The president, do you have any knowledge whether the president had made any reshuffle or seditions like you have called for it? Has he made any reshuffle? Well, in order for the president to carry on reshuffle, he has to have assessed the people he appointed to positions. I, I know, know that. My question is, has he done that? Not yet. Okay. And why is it that this is the only man... Two persons. 
Yeah, I'm not asking for firing, but why is it that Nambodiki is the only man who is getting reshuffled all the time, if I can put it that way? Okay, uh, to answer your question, let us do justice to the president and to the Liberian people. Mary Brewer, who destroy people's houses, how mm-hmm. many times the Liberian United Party people mini go? So Mary brought from one place to another, from one place to another. Multiple times. Was that wrong? Wrong. If, if you say the president is wrong for appointing Nakabusi. To no, I'm not saying he's people. wrong. I, I'm asking you, moving mm-hmm. Mary Bro here and there at the time by Ellen Johnson said, I'm asking you, was that wrong? Well, no, I can't say it was wrong. But was she that? had the she had the will and pleasure to send Mary Bro wherever she wanted to. And this president honor his administration has the power, the authority to send Nakabusi wherever he thinks Nakabusi is fake. However, 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 the president is not the one who does background check. Nakabusi deceived the president. Those who send Nakabusi name forward, I cannot say they deceived the president. Maybe just what Nakabusi presented to them whether they had to go through the immigration. And, and, and Mr. Mr. Dropo, you think that people been selling their number dicky man all these many times, you know, chairman about no car scandal, agriculture scandal, LACC, GSC, and then good governor, I mean, uh, uh, a yeah, national election know. commission. You think that people been recommending him all the time and has job? We are not being able to ask, why are you guys just sending this one man? Oh, let me answer that question, Anthony. Mm-hmm. They, when when people are vetting, vetting for positions, mm-hmm. it is or uh, whoever is in the middle, they take that recommendation or the committee responsible for that, and they mm-hmm. take the recommendation to the president. At which time, I will assume they are able to justify to the president why they should why the president should appoint this person. There's one man over and over, right? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, Costa and but also you know, Williamson. Just to explain my position, you are just asking me questions about why he's sending Nekabusi one place to another. No, you, you said the system, but no, what the question I wanted to ask you, Williamson, because even in the little places we work, there's something called background check, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, if somebody is coming to work with you, yeah. you want to find out, and uh, already Mr. Williamson has raised the credibility question. Mr. Jeru on his podcast has done that several times, the credibility question. Mm -hmm. What is it that you see that the office of the president is not able to see through vetting? Or you say whatever the president, and then uh, Mr. Jeru came up with this notion that the president is doing this based on the assumption that uh, Namudiki is a Liberian. That is so far from the truth. That uh, you you are not for any vetting you are not supposed to do any background check. Whatever is given to you goes. What kind of logic is that? Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Jack. I thought he called my name, but go ahead. Can I come to a rescue? Can I come to a rescue there? Do no, I, I, very... I can speak because he, he's no, asking me questions. Okay, me if, speak, all right, no me problem. Speak. I just wanted to you know, make an interjection and then you can- Okay, continue. go ahead. No, uh, Mr. Ja, let's let me take you back. Precedent is a very important thing. In 1997, President Charles Taylor appointed Money Captain as foreign minister. When Money Captain appeared at the Senate for confirmation hearing, he was questioned, are you a Liberian? He said, yes. How are you a Liberian? My mother, Vuletet, was is a Liberian, 100%. My father, Lebanese man, I was born in Liberia. I have not traveled out of Liberia. And then the question arose. The law says if you are born to a foreigner and a Liberian, it did not say because you were born in Liberia, therefore you cannot be, you cannot declare your status. Have you declared your status? At that point in time, the NPP law of senator in the chamber at the time, I was in the chamber because I was covering a particular case and made a suggestion and made a motion for the tabling of that confirmation hearing. The next day, Monique Carter went to Basso and get a a court certificate that he was naturalized in 1987, no, not 1987, I think 1986, that he naturalized in 1986 
I had it brought it back and it was confirmed. So sometimes you don't know. And I know child doctor, money captain or citizen. They charge to the check it, but that's what we call the normality as access. But we should know. he have checked it, Mr. Juru? Should he have should checked he have it? Tested? Yes, he should have checked it. And but that's the question Mr. Assessed. Jai is asking. No, but let, let. Okay. remember lies, somebody not checking the background of someone. Yeah, the difference with that case. The difference. No, that was not a judge of, right. of, 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 of consent. Consent was right. right. Because you are trying to you are trying to normalize that somebody uh, did a very sloppy job, and you are saying, well, it goes because you know because that's a sloppy job, and it's not only a nationality issue. You raise the question of credibility. The president is not checking. The office of the president is not checking any of those because. So, because he's assuming. So, but constant, go ahead. Okay. So here is what I want to say. The president did the right thing immediately when he found out the truth. No one went to do their background check or whatever they presented to the president. But the mini Mister Nekabusi appeared this time, and the Senate brought all the issues, and Nekabusi could not defend himself or clarify those issues, the president did the right thing. He withdrew his nomination. What else you think the president could have done? The president did the right thing when it was proven. It's not alleged. It was proven. The meaning Nekabusi brought three different birth dates when Nekabusi could not say this, that one, it was clear before the president. No one would say, oh, the president did it because the mayor is a uh, Nigerian or this, that. The president did the right thing. Do not sentence somebody with, are you taking them to court or whatever? The Nekabusi appear and the Nekabusi could not defend himself. The president look at it. The president said, no, this is embarrassing. You cannot do this. You told me differently. And here he said, I am withdrawing my your nomination. The president did the right thing. Thank you. Can I come in? I've been quiet. Eva, yeah. sir. Eva, please. Okay. So let's let's look at this situation, um, Constance. You're saying that the president, after he came to the setting, the, the president said, saw the evidence that he uh, 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 Nab Nababuki uh, brought to the Senate to say that um, this is his papers. Should it, so he would have been confirmed another time if there weren't any questions brought, brought over by the, the Senate or certain people within the Senate to question this guy. My question to you is, he would have come in again with false documents. So is it not laid on top of the president and his office to make sure this is an, this is an autonomous, a credible institution that is for integrity. Mm -hmm. So is that person that's supposed to go to that place not supposed to be, if the president said he came to make the change that he came to make, is that person not supposed to be scrutinized by his office to make sure that it's somebody that comes into an office that is for integrity reasons, that they come there properly and they're vetted properly? Why would the man himself have to bring his own evidence against him for them to say, okay, he's not good? Okay, let me answer your question. Good question. Can I ask? Can I, can I, I can answer your question. She I'll, asked me the question. Can I answer her question? I thought it was a general question. Okay. Oh, excuse me, Eva. Yes. Eva, I will send this question back to you. So when you are employed by your employer, they expect you to perform to the level and they give you job description. If you fail to perform, they fire you. The president got the information that Nekabuzi and gave him. He did what he could have and he nominated Nekabuzi. In Nikabusi now, as time goes by and the president found out that Nikabusi lied to him, the best thing the president did was to withdraw his nomination. The president did the right thing. So my question is, when did, 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 did he give his birth certificate and all that information to the president? When you, when you go for your employee, they, they get your birth certificate. They even make you people in a club to make sure that, 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 that you're not on drugs. They do background check on you. They check all your addresses from beginning all the way to the end to make That's sure America. that everything okay. is proper. In America, that's oh, the mistake. No, 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 don't tell me in America. We need to do it right. We cannot keep yes. talking about this Liberian way what? and do things in Liberia the way we want. I want to interject here. To Let's not right forget. Let's not properly. forget. Let no, not Mr. Forget. Juru, hold on. Mr. Juru, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Let, let, let Eva be protected, please.
what I'm saying is their office to avoid the embarrassment that they have come across with having this man uh, um, bringing him forward. They did not do any kind of check. They did not do anything. As the last I checked, the president is part of this system. He's part of the executive. So they have some, some responsibility in this whole thing. It's the man to bring his stuff to the Senate, the Senate should ask him and then, then, and then the president won't go backtrack to say, okay, this person is qualified or not qualified. Aren't you from the get-go supposed to look for somebody that's supposed to uphold the integrity of this institution? You want to inside? Time for I'm Steve gonna, to come I'm, in. Oh, hold on. Let's bring Steve in. Steve has been quiet for so long. I've been, I've been, I've been saying anything. Yeah. Yes. And, and Mr. Wilson, can I ask you a question and then you can, you know, say whatever you are planning to say, sir? You are free. You know. All right. And, and my question is, was the president ever in the Senate before? Yes. Uh, so as somebody who served in the Senate, I can say that he had knowledge of what confirmation is, right? You, 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 you're making that, yeah. She's and so that. if he knew all of this, that people would ask this kind of question, why would he not do himself justice by asking this question before sending the person to the Senate for confirmation? And this is not a man for a second third or fourth time. Well, again, we, again, we, we, we're going to miss the point yet because we want to have a pension of, of placing blame on, in, on, on individuals. I, I, I'll go back to my point. I blame all this thing on Wadabiki, Wabudiki. Here is the thing, though. Prior to coming, you guys want to forget that this guy was practicing law in Liberia. When you're practicing law in Liberia that's reserved only for a, for a citizen, years before CDC came to power, why would his citizenship basically come out to them? This is guy was practicing law in Liberia. I'm not saying, and, and I keep saying to you the fact yeah, that Mabudiki was not mine. I, wasn't, I didn't favor his appointment. But I'm also going to say that the appointment in of itself was constitutional. And the vetting on him was not going to be based on his citizenship at the point in time. It was not because it was already, it seemed like a settled situation. This is a teaching moment for us Liberians. And I want us to take it as that and learn from it that from now on, if we're doing it, we need to make maybe our bar association, a scrutiny organization that they know to say, look, we need to have done a better job here. We need to put some mechanism in when people bring it up that naturalized paper, we need to do a, a underlining investigation. Because if that was caught, somewhere there, not to give us an excuse, oh, we are not a scrutiny agency. Maybe that's the problem. A second thing with money captain issue here that you brought up. Money captain mother, Vida Tate is a Liberian. None of us know yet what, whether Mwabutiki, any of his parents were naturalized. It was told to us by Mwadabuki. There is no document to that effect. There is no document to the effect that either of his parents were, were Liberians. There's no document to that effect. It is all you say. So it's a quite a different thing yet. Uh, if the president will be blamed, I, don't, I can't stop people from blaming him. I can't stop that. But me, I don't have a blame on him. I blame Mabudiki. Uh, He's the one who gave us this as to why he was appointed on so many occasions. And like you were asking, Constant, I think the president, just as Ellen Johnson had their authority to appoint Maribel, whatever she wanted her to be, it's, the, it's in the Constitution. They are, it's the constitutional prerogative. You can't stop that, you know? But for me, the NEC is very important. And I'm a 100% lawyer to CDC. And, and my loyalty demands that I speak the truth, not to tell people what they want to hear. The appointment of Mobutiki was wrong. He's, he has a less than stellar character to, to bring him over there. That's my position, and that will remain my position. Th thank I'm you. To say because I've uh read some of the cases. Mr. Jack, can I interject something really quick? No, the, 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 of the, the nominee was flawed. The appointment was constitutional. The appointee is flawed based on character. The, 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 his appointment was wrong over there. Yeah, yeah I, I agree on the appointment. For me, they should have vetted him on character and he should not have passed that vetting.
Yeah, but it's not why he was. It, but let's get to the point. It's not why Mabutuki was not. It's not why Mabutuki was not confirmed. It was based on citizenship. That's a debacle. No, it was a citizenship no, that, no, that, that, that no, he was that that, no, that, that, that let, let me let me finish. It was stable on citizenship. Let me finish. Not, not that because it was me, not because of his character though. No, what I'm saying is what we term now has the Namudiki mess is not citizenship alone. Because what we see in the citizenship document is forgery, which is criminal, right? Okay. Or is something it, so it, it casts a doubt on his integrity. So if the president can appoint such a flawed character, because it was not just a matter of Oh, are you naturalized or not? He actually came up with documents that we found out not to be that the, uh, the Senate said were inconsistent or full of discrepancy. So if the president can appoint this flaw character, and th this was not the first time that the story of his integrity has been brought into question. There was a whistleblower right here on focus on like, well, who lay all these things out? So why are we acting like uh, the president is just hearing this for the Mr. first time? Ja, Mr. Ja, I think I think you're trying to find a gotcha politics here. Derek, Derek, my point here. My point here is this. The very day he was appointed, I went and looked at cases that he played and what, the, what some of the, the cases he lost, why he did that. Okay? If, the, if they had to do that, you call about the debacles that we have here right now. It's not based on a character flaw just like that. It's based on his... Uh, it's less than stellar, and it's less than stellar character when it comes to other things. And I think yes, I would agree. Then the president should not have nominated him, based on me and based on what I think, because I don't, I don't think he was the right person for the job. Thank you. <laughs> Let go to Steve before General comes in. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. John. Uh, I think we, uh, we, uh, this is again, this is a very stimulus conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we here for us to not only educate our people, but we can learn from one another in this in this situation. But here are some here, here is another point where I feel that the president should be blamed 100 percent to some extent, especially based on this particular appointment. Um, my, my point here is per constitution, Article 51 of the Constitution Thank you. states that states that they um the vice president is the president of the Senate, the vice president should be channeling the agenda of the president. My question to my fellow panelists is this though. How did that skip the vice president as well? Considering this president and the vice president both have served in the Senate. They understand the issue of the Senate. They understand the in total. And let's just forget about the whole, the, the whole governmental vetting process. They understand nominations and bringing these people on, on board. How did the president not deal with this issue, knowing that this was a critical position that this man was nominated for, uh, Mr. Austin. But let me go to something, uh, let me go to something Brother Joel said in, in, in the context of that, that my question. Um, you see, we, we cannot be going back and forth with um, what Ellen did, what Joe did. True about it, Ellen did wrong. It was wrong yesterday, it is wrong today. We voted change. We want change. We cannot keep making excuses when wrong is wrong. My question to my brother Joel is this. If, if, according to what he said, he said, I wrote it down here, he said part of the of the, the president or the government process, vetting process is to vet character. My question is, why was this man character not vetted? Because the entire nomination issue start just on clarifying if this man was a laborer or not. The vetting process of his character does not even come into play. So we can't take that into consideration yet. But why did the president and the vice president miss this part of the show? That is my question. And that's where I stand. And I think, again, before I, before I land, please wait. Before I land, I will say it again. I want to be on record for this. The president must apologize to the Liberian people for sending a crook, a froster to the Liberian people three different times in very key positions. The president needs to apologize to Labrimpo for that. that is uh, Mr. Mr. Bole. I think the question was, I think the question to me that he asked, but I will, I will add it and, and I will end here very briefly. Listen, again, pointing the president to three, four different times is the president's constitutional prerogative. I don't care whether we like it, I didn't like what Ellen did and what Ellen did, what Doe did before, as long as it was in the constitutional, it was the constitutional architecture within the purview, that's fine. Last thing here is this, 
Do you, you, you wait to call your president. He, he, if you Liberian, you ask your president to apologize. Whether mm -hmm. he would do it, that I mean, you, you are entitled to that opinion. Yeah. You are entitled, and I will support that. That you you feel that way. You, you, it, it's fair for them to do it. You know, you are equally. Yeah, you know, but not, uh, the president. What he did as a partisan, I didn't like the Wabudiki thing. I would not agree with them one hundred percent. And part of my loyalty demands for me to to have that kind of uh, super reality to tell them you are wrong at this point. Thank I you. think Wabudiki was a wrong pick. And I asked him three days ago on my Facebook page, please withdraw that nomination. Go back and see it. March twenty, March thirtieth. I did that. So I, 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 I'm not here to be a blind. Let me come yes, in here, Mr. Mr. Williamson. Let me come in here. Uh, again, you are right. Mr. Bully, he can call on the president to apologize all he wants. That he, that he president, nobody's going to interfere with that. Whether it makes sense, that I have business to determine that. But here is the thing we have to understand. For me, I like to look at the legalistic aspect of it. This man, the Supreme Court passed on his status. The Supreme Court of the Republic of Liberia the final arbiter of justice in our country, who makes a decision and never changes, anybody can change. The people pass on the man's status that he is a citizen and he was granted law license. The president nominated him and appointed him as acting to the Good Governance Commission. He did not go for confirmation hearing. So the president could not have been held responsible for the mess of the Wabudike. The second appointment, which was the Liberal Anti-Corruption Commission, it was the one that was submitted to, to, to confirmation hearing. At this time, the Senate could have called it. If the Senate could have called it at that time, which is not a very lousy position that people would say, oh, you know, we, the man is not saying he can't be there. He would not have that kind of situation. He could have quietly been told, my man, your documents are flawed. We cannot uh, uh, confirm you and would not have been, would have, would have been spared this embarrassment. Let me give you a few instances. In the U.S., I like to bring the U.S. because all of us here live in the U.S. In America, before you submit people to the Senate for confirmation, there's a thorough, thorough, thorough investigation that goes on. But the Trump administration has had many problems like that. They nominated Jesse Miller. Jesse Miller had a problem they did not know. Trump had to withdraw the man after it was noticed. They nominated, uh, the others nominated Monica Crowley. They, Monica Crowley had a problem. They withdrew Monica Crowley because of the problem. They also nominated Kathleen, Kathleen, uh, Kathleen White. Kathleen White had a problem. They withdrew Kathleen White because of the scene of, 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 of the problem. They also nominated Tom Ma Marino. Tom Marino, 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 I think Tom Marino, they nominated, he also had a problem, they had to withdraw him. Even in America, the president will assume that after all the vetting, you are clear, and there's a problem that will crop up. In one particular case, the president nominated him for the first position, which was not, in which he was not submitted to confirmation. He acted for a few months, I think three months, and was <laughs> the Liberal Anti-Corruption Commission. At the point at the Liberal Anti-Corruption Commission, when he was submitted for confirmation hearing, it was the time that the Senate was supposed to catch it because the president could rely on the Supreme Court ruling that he was citizen. Who would question Supreme Court ruling? How can you blame the president for not questioning Supreme Court ruling? It's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair to question the president on that. Th thank you. We want to go to some comments and, uh, and then uh, we can go to our phone lines. But before, Mr. Jab, Mr. Jab, yeah, sorry for interrupting. And I, Mr. Jab, I mean, Mr. Jury went into history, yeah. And I want to say here yeah. also, Trump could not nominate Chris Christie because head on he had problem. Thank you. Trump could not nominate, uh, what is his personal lawyer, uh, 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 Michael uh, Cole, ruling, ruling, Julian Julian Julian. Julian. I mean, he couldn't nominate him because the new head on he had problem. Mm -hmm. And here's the point I'm making here. Here's the point I'm making. President, we are knows Nambu Diki squarely. Yes. That's his friend. He has been a personal lawyer. The evidence is that this is the only man that has been appointed by the president more than four times. No, speaks to the fact that the president knows him personally. And so the president should have known that this man got some question. For the fact that there are also records about this man at the Supreme Court. 
I will leave it there and then Jazz will take over. Mr. Jazz. Yeah, right. And uh, my question was going to Steve <laughs> before we go to our comments. And uh, yes, Mr. General, I hope you, you get uh, Mr. C's point clearly that uh, there are times when the president knows that there is a lot of wahala behind the nominee. He doesn't move forward with the nomination. So, yeah. Yeah, oh, hold on, oh, hold on, let, 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 let lay that. Quick, 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 very t three, ten sec I mean, ten seconds. In the case of Chris Christie, it was in the media that he was, he was a problem. How can the president go ahead with it? All right. In the case of Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani had a, had a security firm, has a security firm running, and he told the president, that would be conflict of interest. I have a security firm. I cannot, I cannot join you. So how is there a, how is there a problem? You have to understand the history before you, you, you get it as a, as an example, that's not the same. Yeah. That's not the same situation. Well, the same situation, but let's let's move on. Uh, Steve Bolle, you you are giving you are holding the president accountable and responsible solely for this. But uh, Jules Zobo say, don't look at the place you fall down, but look at the place you stomp your toes. Juan yes. Bodiki has been practicing. Juan Bodiki has gained the system before President Weir. So. Why not you looking back and, and seeing that uh, where it all started? I know some of some of our people, even before you send money in Western Union, they ask you for your ID card. When you present a hundred dollar bill, they check it to see whether it's counterfeit. But we are saying the Supreme Court is not supposed to check, National Bar Association is not supposed to check, or uh, University of Labrador is not supposed to ask any question, just go ahead. So why are you not holding some of these people or these areas responsible? I think that's a fair question, but I, I, to answer that question, I have to go back to what Eva said earlier, and I, I would have to concur with Eva, because it is important for us to have some reforms. The reforms of our system, I'm saying entirely, will be able to provide that, that scrutiny level so that there's not these different laps that people can come through our system. So let's let's look at it and one of the reforms that i think i think i would i would like to i would like to applaud the the the, the Bar um, Bar association um councilor john gongolo he jumped on the issue as soon as possible and as we speak he, there was an investigation into uh, mr austin's you know not only his citizenship but all these pathways but the truth of the matter is the reform comes after we've taken this is why we are having a briefing today the reform comes after we've taken clear responsibility who to be held accountable at this juncture. And at this juncture, I would say the president should be held accountable 100% while we are working on a reform and other organizations deal with um, their own mistakes as well. Thank you. Let, let's go to our comments on Facebook. This one uh, and some of the nasty comments, we're not going to read them because that's not proper. Uh, let me start with... Uh, Janine Mayer said the president has done what is right by withdrawing his nomination. Who are you talking about? Uh, Franklin Montgomery Gibson, at, the, at that time, there was not light in the Senate. Senator Dillon was not in the Senate. That was the reason Councilor uh, Mamoudike was confirmed. And... Uh, Christopher Tobasi, the president withdrawal of the nominee Namudiki is belated. I believe the president should have withdrawn the nominee before the Senate suspended the hearing. But I want to commend our president for his courage to withdraw uh, Wamudiki, the Nigerian man, based on the new evidence that was presented during the hearing yesterday. Thank you, Mr. Honorable President. Uh, Dave Jai is saying, uh, Joel Williamson is uh, blaming, uh, presenting a case that you are blaming the, the, the rogue for stealing. Uh, Pale Orito were told the president and the VP did, did what the past government did. Tell Ellen and Doe to apologize. Did you tell Costa that was wrong when he went in the country illegally? All right. Out of solution, Steve Bullard, the president, don't need to apologize for appointing by his rights. By laws, the president need not apologize for anybody. All right. Mr. C, you say, do we have callers on the line? Uh, Mr. Jal, let me read a few more comments. Yeah, we have callers on the line. Let me read a few more comments here. Yeah. This one from Billy Ted Jr. He writes, the vice president himself is trying to survive. We have leadership. 
if at all she was aware of the appointment before announcing or forwarding the need to the senator for confirmation. And then Powerhouse writes, the man enjoyed his fake documents and manipulated Liberian stakeholder to ascendancy. How about that? Uh, Robin Draper writes, this is a teachable movement that should be based on your broken systems. This is why our records are not acceptable beyond our bolos in the schools and rec in that school. Records and birth certificate, blah, 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 everything. And then uh, Franklin Montgomery right? President, we are needs to apologize to the Liberian citizens and he need to prosecute Councillor Nambudiki. And finally, uh, Madison Wright, sedition always shifting blame. They are not prepared to lead Liberians. Those sedition don't see wrong in we are at all. Comment them. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Panelists, can you hear him? Go ahead, Gakan. You are live. Thank you. No, I said thank you. You can you can just conclude. Why did he obtain it? Why was he submitted to the bar? 
you know, I did this person who, these are things that you have to present a record. But thank you all for the show. Thank you. And I don't know if you guys wrong, but I think the issue of citizenship that was that was root come or that we had some of I think it, it, it was factually wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, folks in cyberspace, you are watching Focus on Liberia. And this is our Friday program. And this is a special edition, and we are in a deep briefing on Mr. Nabu Dickey. Uh, panelists, uh, let's move to this section. Uh, so, what should we do now? All right. What should we do now? How do we correct this problem? Can I respond to the brother comment about the constitution? Yeah, quickly. Yeah, quickly, because you see the problem I have with librarians, they don't ask questions other people will know before they come to the kind of show. How can you say because the naturalization law was violated and not the constitution, so it cannot be attainable? The naturalization law is functioning now. There's nothing in the constitution that says you should naturalize at 21. There's nothing, absolutely zero. The only law we have in Liberia that talk about natural naturalizing yourself is the alien and naturalization law. And they say when you reach the age of 21, you should declare your citizenship. Even if you have your mother born in Liberia, your father born outside, and you yourself were born in Liberia, you should naturalize yourself before you can be considered Liberian. Like in the case of Costa. Costa is not citizen yet until he naturalized himself. That's what we're trying to say. There's no uh, lawyer. Mr. Mr. Juro, they cost that thing. You want you want to come to a debate to it, right? I agree with you. Bring me on. <laughs> Anybody in the world, bring them on. All right. Okay. Okay. We, we will look into that. And that, that, that comes to you, uh, Joel. Yeah. So I understand what the uh, caller was saying. But here is the thing, though. When we're looking at documents, we we'll look at previous documents, we we'll look at present documents. If the man document says in his passport, he has Liberian passport now, say he was born in 1965. Muted. Okay. Said he was born in 1965. That's a document. That's the present document he has. And that document does not, and compared with the document he presented as naturalization document, given in 1982, automatically disqualifies him. So I understand people want to say, Automatically, to me, it disqualifies him. And when we talk about the, 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 the Constitution was suspended in that 82, the national, the alien and nationality law was still in existence. It was still in existence. And then that law of 1973, it was in existence. And that's the law that he was, he was trying to show, yes, my certificate, and the age was in conflict with that, with that document, okay? So the, the, the other thing here is this. Here is another thing we're talking about, which we're talking about, say Costa AC. I know it's not Costa debate, but Costa just ran for office in Liberia. So, so all of this that you see, you see this organization is not uh, a, a body of scrutiny. How? This is why I agree with the two ladies on this phone. It's, it's a systemic failure. We need to go back and we, when you ask the question, of how do we stop this thing? Maybe we need to go back and look at our system. How can we translate to biometrics, to digital storage of, doc, of, of our, our file, rather than using paper storage and what have you? How do we do those things moving forward? Because we could have gone to, to find this, this document, the application that this guy filed, whether he had 1963 as his birthday or he had 1965. Because in the absence of those things, so my position here is that we need to change our system and transform to a more digital uh, record keeping system. Thank, thank you. And let's come to you, uh, Mr. Dupo. How do we correct the system? Saying you said the system is the problem, so we not get we don't get another number of dicky mess on our hand in the future. Oh, thank you, Mr. C. And there are a couple of recommendations, but before I go further, I would like to talk about this election commission the agency. Mm -hmm. As you and I know, we came to this point because of so many reasons. People believe that, you know, the 1985, the 1987, the elections were not free and fair. Elections are elements between 
the war and our democracy, the peace. So going further, in the first place, in order to be the chairman of the election commission, you don't have to be a lawyer. That is clear. I don't know why people think you have to be a lawyer. No, you do not have to be a lawyer. You have to be someone with good moral characters, somebody who people can trust. And it doesn't say you have to be a nonpartisan, in fact. Nothing like that is stipulated in our constitution in order to have that position. We need to move forward. And I will say, I will go again and say it's the system. Going further, we are talking about Nikki Busi, we are talking about this, but just talk about the police officer. People should serve their country with passion. Do not take opposition only because of the money. I find it very, very, I don't know what kind of difficulties it may be in Morovia. I can be a school teacher. I will not take money from little children and tell them my birthday and will take $5 from kindergarten students. So that's a systemic problem. Going further, if I were to talk to the president or the people around the president, I would make recommendations. There are credible Liberians, United Partisan, seditions, a lot of qualified seditions. I can name about 10 of them with good character, moral standing. Not because, and I don't want people to say we should deprive people Liberian of position, maybe because they are United Partisan or Liberty Partisan or sedition. No, if the person is a, a, a trustworthy person, a person with good professional you know, background, they should be appointed. You should nominate the person. You know, we got men that Nimari Warner, he been in Liberia. We got men that uh, Kofi Wolf. We got men that Professor Isaac Zawu. We got men that uh, 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 Arthur Zakama. We got lawyers like Tiawo Ngongoro. These are Liberian that when you appoint nobody, I don't think people will come and question you. In order for a society, this even you can have the constitution, if the society is not prepared for that change, it will not happen. Liberian are prepared for change now. That is why you saw the, the 2017 election the way it went. Because people were ready, we were tired. Erin Jose came there with all the America she lives. She couldn't even carry common computer in office. Say everybody gets mom a laptop. We are ready. I don't think Nick Busi or the president, it was anything personal, but I'm not sure. I think people questioned the past to not, uh, governor commission because people didn't look at it. But election commission, I don't think Liberia were ready for Nick Busi to get that position. You know, because that's the... You know, that's the agency that will bring into place. The Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dropo. Uh, we got callers on the line here. Uh, let us uh, give them some time to talk. Uh, let's see here. The man, Willem Bra, joining us from all the way to France. Uh, my man, you have one minute. Mr. Bro? Mr. Bro, go ahead. What then, Bro, are you there? Mr. Bro, it seems to be you're not paying attention. Uh, let come to... Uh, Unmuted. Let come to Joe Moyo. Yes, sir. Yep. I'm enjoying your... Uh, your debate. <laughs> but Thank look, you. Uh, the question you ask is, the question you ask is, who's to blame? Mm -hmm. Let's face it, the buck stops with the president and he has to own it. He's the one to blame. He's the one who put uh, Nwadu Bukki uh, uh, forward for that position. The problem we have, and this is something that's been going for years, not only we are, to leave, I assume even during uh, a door. The institutions in Liberia are very, very weak. And you will find people, uh, foreigners, understanding that we don't have that much in terms of institutions. You know, we don't, we don't have bulletproof institutions like you have here. And it will get penetrated through fraud, misrepresentation. And I'm sure there's more 
Nwadubuki, or whatever his name is, still in Liberia within the government circles. So that's the problem we have. We have to learn how to build institutions. And then, you know, we, we can also layer it with, uh, are you there? We are listening to you. Hello? Yes, we listen to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have to learn how to build our basic institutions, like the immigration. That's mm -hmm. one institution that that is, is very easy to penetrate through bribery, misrepresentation, and all that. The justice system also need, needs to be uh, built. The judiciary. The only strong institution we have in Liberia right now is the executive. But even the legislative branch, they, they are open to bribes and all that. We 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 uh, remember the situation with uh, uh, Prince Izik, another Nigerian, uh, who he paid, he bribed our judiciary, and he won, uh, uh, won a bid, and he took, he bribed them what fifty thousand dollars. He won won this oil bid that we had through Local. Took that money. I mean, he took the the uh, the bid that he won and sold it to uh, Chevron for two hundred and fifty million dollars. You All right, so thank you. Those are the, the problem we have. We, we don't have strong institutions. So, of course, we are, will have to take the blame. The buck stops with him. He's the president. He put the candidate forward. So to thank answer, you. I think it was Mr. Williamson's question, yes, it's all on we are. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, let's take this caller here, Mr. John. Uh, all right. Yeah. Hello. Go ahead, Mr. Bro. You have one minute. Thank you. I just uh, I want to say thank you. The program is very co uh, cool. Let me make a few corrections. I saw how one of your brother talking about uh, Oboniki represented the president in court during the 2017 election. No, it was Snow. It was not. He never represented the president. Then on the other issue about. Uh, the vice president to be the one serving as a liaison between the president and the Senate. No, it is the executive, the the the, the, the I can call the, the the chairman on executive at the Senate that serve as a liaison between the president office and the Senate. So that are just a few things. Then with respect to me, we will not. You cannot blame a president. Who nominated a Liberian? First of all, everything we're discussing and under assumption, Oboniki is a Liberian. People who will say, don't blame Supreme Court, yeah, Supreme Court not supposed to scrutinize, you are not supposed to. So who's supposed to scrutinize? Supreme Court is the higher decision making body of our country in interpreting our laws. They should be the ones scrutinizing any legit legal document of people. They gave the men credence. How can the president look at a man who's serving as a Liberian lawyer in the country and do an, any other background check again? Before you serve a Liberian lawyer, you got to graduate from law school. You have to be a Liberian before you serve in the bar. More to that, he's secretary general in the bar. And let's look at the issue of people being scrutinized in the president's vote of scrutinized and this day. Yes, it will just be an added advantage. What is nominate? Nominate me, I can pull for a candidate. And the thing you look at is the resume or the CV. The mm -hmm. people who are responsible to scoot on us is the Senate. That's why they say confirmation, meaning the CV, the president, and the individual, the portfolio, and send a CV, confirm whether these things are true. That's just a simple function of governance there. So I don't know why people will say, oh, the president's going to scoot on us. The president, no. And we get him mature gradually in our democracy. Thank, thank, thank you. God thank these you. things come out. Because our brain will boot. Yeah, thank God that these things come out. So it's not the president, uh, the president not to be blamed. The man entered the bar since 2006. Thank you, Mr. Bro. Thank you, Mr. Bro. Lawyer. Thank you for your participation, you Mr. So Bro. Uh, Mr. Jal, let's take this one and then we'll come back to our panelists. Uh, Caller with 3383, your turn. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, A.B. Carly. I'm calling from Big Lake, Minnesota. Mr. Carly. Uh, I just want to say that, yeah, uh, I just want to say that you guys are doing great uh, discussing all of the issues that are concerning our country, Liberia. One point I want to make is that, you know, the both partners on both sides, 
the pros and cons are actually saying basically almost the same thing. The president is not totally to be blamed for putting this guy forward. For one fight, this guy herself has lawyers in the country for so many years. He did a lot of good job, you know, for for, for this uh, government who wants uh, some cases. But the other point I want to make, now we know that this guy is a fraudster. He's a criminal. I Carlos Gray make a point during the confirmation hearing that the Pandora box has, 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 has opened. My point would be that the uh, immigration system or whatever investigation system we have in place in Liberia should start going after all of those uh, naturalized citizens, you know, to make sure that their papers are right. Because what's going to happen is in the next 20 years, 25 years, children that are born to those naturalized citizens will want to be somebody in that country. What What's going to happen is this same problem will come up. And we know that after 20 years, this problem will come up. Like somebody mentioned Monica Pink, you know, and some somebody also mentioned, like when they try to refer to uh, 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 Edward J. Ross, which of course, I mean, that doesn't make sense. Mr. Kale. My point is that. Mr. Kale. Yes. I, I hope you are not taking us to a Trump like Muslim band, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know I'm not looking at Trump. So no, but what I'm saying is the Pandora box has been open already. So right. I mean, they should go after those people. So there, there, are, there are a lot of people who I, I, I would say are are first right now in, in the country who don't Thank even you. have their naturalization people legally, you know, through the legal system. So fair, fair point. Fair open. point. Let me go up there. Yeah, quickly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And uh, the last one, uh, then we'll close it. Uh, that will be Desing Kanga. Mr. Kanga, are you ready now? You have one minute, sir, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the show. You know, I, I want to appreciate the, the panel on the show for their splendid, uh, you know, deliberation. And everybody is, is, is put you for, uh, you know, their concern regard to, you know, the situation. Yeah. So my, my point here is I want to make I want to make clear and I want to be very very <laughs> clear here. The issue of the president nomination, the president was not wrong. It is the prerogative of the president to nominate whoever he he decides to nominate to a, a specific position in regards to our constitution. So for people to come and say that the president was wrong, <laughs> for people to come and say that the president was wrong. I mean, it is a it's a mistake, and they have to check the constitutional. I mean, the constitution to find out that the president was not in the wrong. But then let me go to the point. Some of the issues that we are raising today is going to serve as a a a, a, a constitutional uh, bound for us. Why am I saying today we agree that at least we have flagged out you know issue of uh, Udi Wonzi citizenship. But let us not forget that we are having children. And today, Liberian women, people are forgetting not to know. Liberian women's citizenship is being questioned is 50% because the, the law now is telling us that if a child is born onto a Liberian woman and a foreigner, that child does not have a 100% right in Liberia until he goes to the court to uh, flag it out or get a certificate. So my point here to women today who are advised to seek for public offices, now it is a challenge for you. Your constitution has come into your face and tell you your child is not a Liberian, whereby you have a Liberian citizenship 100%. So my challenge to women now, you need to advocate for this to happen, that your child or your children will be a Liberian citizen tomorrow. Because Thank you. if you forget this, and we just play as a politics. Thank tomorrow you. They're going to hunt you, they're going to hunt me, they're going to hurt Mr. Jai is to you. Thank you. That's my point. I can speak to that. <laughs> all right, let's do this, uh, panelists. Uh, we 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 going almost two hours. So what we're gonna do now is we'll ask you for goodbye your closing uh, statement, and you will conclude on how do we avoid this Namudiki men's in the future, and your recommendation. 
So uh, this time around, we will start, uh, I think we'll start with the ladies. Mr. Jai, what do you think? For some time. Yeah, Eva. Yes, Eva. Well, I know, you know, we're bringing up all this stuff about immigration law and that. Oh, yes, we need to look into that. But like I keep saying, our system is flawed. And people will get on me when I say this, but I also think our constitution is flawed especially in the sense of allowing a president to nominate to autonomous institutions, because he's going to nominate people that can be of his best interests. He's gonna nominate people that he can easily manipulate. Ellen did it, Taylor did it. Everybody was able to, to nominate whomever they thought that would help them, especially when it comes to elections. We need to take away, especially for these so-called autonomous um, institutions, the, the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission, the president appoints, the president helps to, I can say, oversee it for the, the um, 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 NEC, the president appoints, the president can consult. He's basically involved in the NEC. So at this point, why do we have these, why we, do we have, and, and yes, we're supposed to have checks and balances with the Senate, but if you can pay them a little bit of money, if you can pay whomever, you're able to ha you're able to get what it is that you want out of them. This man was appointed to LA uh, um, LACC. Nobody checked anything. Nobody did anything. He was appointed to the bar. He was appointed to the Supreme Court. So there are many holes in our system. I think we need to take away the um, um, autonomous um, institution institution. Make a neutral commission that oversees the vetting process of all of this that the president, that the Senate is not involved with in the sense of who is qualified to come for nomination or who is qualified to be vetted and bring to the Senate to say, okay, this person is okay. That's that's my view. Uh, Mrs. Clifford. Oh, I want to thank Eva for her recommendation, but I differ with her on taking away some power from the executive because we Liberians are supposed to be good citizens, you know, true citizens. That is to say, if I refuse to bribe the policeman, the policeman will not receive any bribe. So the president can appoint because even if we set up a different agency that we carry on the vetting process, they know people, if we are, if the, if the, if the, the society is corrupt, whoever you appoint, it would be the same thing. So I always say that Liberian, before we even talk about the sixth thing, let us talk about ourselves. We should be good stewards. We should be good citizens. And the president has the power to appoint the citizen, even you can be in opposition, we are all Liberian. Imagine the people that slaughter people. They are walking around in Liberia. Nobody going after them. We are not killing people. So we can be civilized people that know people that have good record, who stand for good moral, who got good characters, and we can appoint them to the agency. The president will nominate and people will scrutinize. The senator will do their job. The president will do his job. I would recommend at this point in time that Liberians, we need to put aside this of, uh, you know, Ellen thing, we are thing, we are as the president. We need to focus on Liberia, the good things that he is doing. And I would recommend a couple of people to the president to, to appoint or nominate to that position. And first on the list, I would say I know a good Liberian citizen, couple of them. I say Zagro could be somebody of good character, regardless of whatever, but that can stand for the Liberian people because he has done it over and over. You get near there or the money one. So there are other Liberians that the president can appoint with good character that nobody will question him and say, oh, this person, those people will be confirmed because they have good morals and they have their professional people. Liberian, we need to be good citizens. And we need to do what is right and forget about the bribery, forget about bar muffing one another. But the truth will always be the truth. Let us stick to the truth, no matter your party affiliation. 
Amos Sedition and Remy of Sedition. I support the president 100%. He's not perfect. I am not perfect. You are not perfect. But he has Liberia at heart. With all the presidents that have come and gone, people only crying because they are not getting that 20 million, 30,000 30, for one person. They're not getting it. The president is doing his best. So I support this president. I support the CDC led government. And I will recommend good life that the president look at them and nominate somebody to that position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Estrepo. It's like you forgot to uh, recommend yourself. Let's come to you, uh, Mr. Gibson, no, for your, your, your closing statement. And Mr. Gibson, don't forget to recommend yourself to the president. <laughs> if I would recommend myself, I recommend myself to be the Minister of Information. But <laughs> Eugene Langway is my good friend. I don't know if I do that, he will pick issue with me. So I will reserve that for now. But let me just say one thing. Um, I also want to disagree with Eva on the, the appointment. She didn't like the appointment of, of term individual. The problem with electing these kind of people by the people is because they don't, they do not report to the president. If you elect them, they will be reporting to the legislature and then the president will not have oversight over them. And they are functioning in the executive. So that's why the president appoint them, but he does not dismiss them. They are impeached. So that's the only, that's the safety net for them. For instance, the, the central bank governor, if you say the central bank governor should be elected. So if the man goes okay, rogue, the president, if the man that's goes no, it's a term position. These are term when did I say that? I yeah, said that was autonomous agency. positions. There'll be autonomous okay. ones. Okay. Autonomous agencies. Okay, so the yeah. LSC, okay, the LAC, like LAC. yeah, there's too much conflict of interest involved for okay. it to be nominated by the president because That's per their okay. all go ahead. Okay. No, no, I, there's I, 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 there's I, I, too I, much room for manipulation of those agencies, the LACC and the NECC, the, the procurement process. They are autonomous. There's, that means they're supposed to be separate of any kind of conflict of interest. But if you have the president that can that can that can um, uh, benefit from putting somebody there for him, how is it autonomous? How is it void of conflict of interest? Do we have That's any? What I'm saying. Do, you have, do you have an example in the world where the election commission was elected by the people? I didn't say elect elected by the people. I said creating a separate neutral commission that oversees those autonomous um, 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 institutions. Not, 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 yeah, thank you. That's not, a no, not elected, not, not anybody else. Yeah, the autonomous oh, ones. That's no, what we no. always have a problem with the autonomous institutions, which for those institutions, especially the anti corruption and the NEC, this guy has gone from any from, from LACC. So NEC. So he's 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 worked on the, the the corruption part of it. There's been a lot of corruption and stuff that's been going on. What what has he done in that position? Uh, I, now he's going to NEC. Okay. That's that's what my point is. But go ahead and finish what you have to say. No, absolutely. No, you clarify. That makes it good. Once you clarify, I also believe uh, having a commission to vet these kind of people and managing the life term of, I mean, the term of these people, it makes a lot of sense to me. But let me just make my last comment here. I want to come back to the issue of the Supreme Court. I mean, the Senate, I'm sorry, not the Senate, Supreme Court, the Senate. When we have the first shot for the Senate to decide for us whether this man was going to be anybody credible or not, the Senate blew it. They did not do their due diligence. They did not vet the candidate. They simply let the candidate pass. They gave Mr. Weir the notion that this man was actually a citizen of Liberia and he did not have any problem. Had they caught it from the very beginning, that man would not have ascended to the second position. He would have been stopped right at the Liberian Anti-Corruption Commission. But I agree with some of you. We have to be open when we are discussing this thing. There's nobody here who is again, Mr. President, Blow, he dropped the ball. The president dropped the ball. I put it at 30%, but to be, it might be even more than that. As the president of the country, you must have two different ways to vet your people. The, in America, there's a Republican committee that helped the Republican president to vet nominees. 
you you meet with them, they ask you questions, they go after you, they, they, they bring people in, they, they even tutor you how to answer questions. In Liberia, we have a CDC as like the Republican here, they did nothing. They did not have the nominee, they did not have the president, they sat there and allowed everything to go cascade. So can you imagine, we have the ruling party senators who could not even provide any leeway for this nominee, even to file a motion and say motion of postponement when they found out that this thing was going bizarre, they, they, they could not even do that. That's the bottleneck if you have people who do not know what they are doing. But again, the president dropped the ball because he is the president and everything that happened in this country, he take responsibility. My agreement with Eva is we need to do something better. We need to start to revamp the organization. We have problems, all of us know. Right now, guys, you leave Rihanna and go to Moravia. My last thought, you leave Rihanna and go to Moravia. Go to World Trade Center. Any kind of document you want in library, you get it. So tell me, the security people in Moravia, so they cannot detect that and now people are still surviving there? People make people, somebody, somebody falsify my, my deed. All the people document have been falsified. They are right there on, in Moravia. The security people let them do that. No arrest, no punishment, nothing. And then tomorrow we'll get another one, Madiki, who will come to us. Sorry, everybody, we got, we all got difficulty pronouncing the name here. We have another one, Wakadiki. Uh, uh, Mr. Gibson, I'll, I'll open your class uh, for the pronunciation <laughs> of his name. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> It's right, I know. Suppose Wadigi, Wadogo, Wamugu, me, I just leave it there and say Austin. Yeah. We have another Austin tomorrow because the system, like Eva said, is so flawed. So flawed. I go register my, 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 my organization. I don't want to talk about that, sir, because you can't imagine that people, they, you go pay taxes, then they tell you to bribe them. That's how bad the system is. You go pay taxes. You got almost a thousand dollars in your hand to give it to them for the to government. Then the mentor, you say, my man, give me something before I tell your kid. Are you kidding me? That's how bad the system is, my people. We have to fix the system. Eva, you, you got me on that one. All right. Let's come to Mr. Joel Williamson uh, for your closing. Uh, don't forget, how do we fix it? And your recommendation to close. So I'll begin by starting where, you know, by going back to where I began, that all of this problem, if it comes to the citizenship of uh, whoever made a fake document or whether it was fake, is all Mabudiki's fault. It is where he started. You don't use a vulnerable system to get by. Our system has its flaws that does not give anybody the right to take advantage of it. That's, that's one. Uh, I want to also say that the president's appointment of a naturalized citizen to head NDC was, is constitutional. And once you're a naturalized citizen in Liberia, there's only two positions you cannot hold. You cannot run for president, you cannot be vice president. So any other position there was fine. Never had the problem initially with Mabutiki's, uh, Mabutiki's uh, citizenship. I had a problem with having gone through his Supreme Court cases. I had a problem with the appointment because I thought it's less than stellar. The NEC is a very reputable body. You need uh, someone that will output uh, a catalog flaws, a catalog flaws at the position. So I think that moving forward, yes, the president, uh, whether it was appointed a Liberian, like I was against the Charles Cooper nomination, whether it was a Liberian, even that person had less than stellar character, I was still being against it but I do support the president for appointing that. I don't think it was his blame that we were here today uh, when it comes to the citizenship of Mabudiki. I don't want to blame any, any institute right now because I want to keep it right where I have it. Mabudiki is at fault. His inconsistencies uh, are the one that, that have us here today. I don't think we'll be here if indeed everything was correct with his paper. I don't think we'll be here today. Uh, the president will not appoint saints. As much as I didn't like him, it was the president's prerogative to appoint him. Moving forward, what we need to do is transition our data collection and storage. Because maybe if we had a way to plug this guy uh, application, 
we would have seen on his application what age he had. Did he have the same age he had on his university, uh, his law school application, 1963, to, to put him in line with the 21 years of age that he should have been at that time? Or did he have 17? The idea of 17 comes up today because he said in his passport, he was born 1965. And in as much as I'm saying this yet, no decision has been made yet from the Senate. So everything is to assumption that whether this guy was wrong or so that. I thought I'm leaning on the side that he doesn't have the right document. So I'm waiting yet. But so what if he shows an application that he had 1963 on that? That was before his, his, his passport that had 65. What will we do? What will we do? There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of moving parts here. And I know we're being sentimental and we are thinking all of this. And we have come to the point to call him a fraudster. As we're going through here, there are a lot of things going through my mind and saying, have we really cooped all of this to come to the fact that indeed, because there is another document that has 1963 prior to today. And so we don't know what that application was in 1982. What did it have on it? And because the passport today has 65, we all are going on this. If Mabudiki had told us today in that passport, it was 1963 in that passport, we would have no question today. So it just tells us about our own record keeping. So I agree with the ladies here. I would blame the system and we can do better moving forward to, to do this. And okay. I know I've getting in my inboxes over the last week. From and your, vice- recomm- your recommendation uh, uh, to the president, are you, are you recommending my yourself? My recommendation to the president for what? My recommendation is we change our system to a more digital data storage keeping. And for the position, I'm not, the president still has the prerogative to pick whoever he wants to, to pick to that position. Maybe so, the president needs some help, but it seems that you're not willing to give him some help. Let's come to the man, Steve Bullet, for his closing uh, statement. Mr. Bullet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Asunisie, and thank you, Mr. Dennis Jai. I'd like to um, start by saying thanks to Mr. Cheru, um, Eva, uh, my brother Joe, and um, Constant. I want to say thanks to all of you guys. I think the love of Liberia has brought all of us to come to this conversation, honestly. And thanks for affording the platform. I'd like to make one or two clarifications on some things here really quick. Um, um, I never asserted here, or I, never, I didn't say that it was not a president's right. As a matter of fact, it's constitutional that he has all rights to appoint um, or to nominate. Um, I also did not say anything about the vice president, not whatever accession some of the colleagues made earlier. But what I said was uh, the vice president is the president of the Senate, and um, she's supposed to be promoting the interest of the president. And so in that context, based on the fact that she has experience in the Senate along with the president, both of them should have coordinated um, to ensure that the vetting process of this guy was well done and he was scrutinized so that we did not come to this problem. And that was my point, you know, but again, let's let's move on to the issue here. Um, I, think, I think one of the things we ought to do, um, we ought to revisit the constitution. It's been 34 years since the constitution was revisited. Things have changed. Time, times, times have changed. And so so have people, so have situations and conditions. We have to revisit the constitution. But in the meanwhile, while we are thinking about revisiting the constitution to make some amendments or some adjustments within the constitution, I'd, I'd recommend that um, the president, the president ensures, you know, next time there is a better vetting process going forward. Um, I will also agree with Eva's point that those um, autonomous positions, you know, be separate and, and they have a separate vetting process for them so that, you know, people do not appoint people and it does not, even, even if it doesn't, if, if, if that's not the case, but the optics are very important and people's co- connection with people are also important. Um, those will be part of my recommendation. Um, another recommendation I would seriously like to make is this though. Um, it is important for us to come up with the mind come up with the theory or start to implement something in my line of work I call reward and punishment in Liberia. We, we need to get to that. Um, the, reason, the, the reason you see great countries are thriving and they are doing very well 
It's not because they're better than us or they're smarter than us as Liberians. One of the things they've installed is, is accountability and transparency. Accountability and transparency comes with um, you know, reward and punishment. We must be able to punish people. I don't care who they are. We must get to that point. While we are working on a system or however we want to term it, reward and punishment must be the call of the day. And one thing I've noticed about Liberian people, whether in Liberia or out of Liberia, we are able to follow line, we are able to fall in line, we're able to follow rules and regulation. The only thing is we are too lenient with the reward and punishment. In other words, we do not punish people who do wrong. We need to get to that point and we need to hold everybody accountable, even down to the president. We need to hold the president accountable. If the president does wrong, we tell him he's done wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. And this is why I stand with what I said earlier. The president is to be blamed and the president needs to apologize to the Liberian people. That being said, I want to say thanks to Focus on Liberia. Let's continue to have this positive conversation and I think it will help all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Steve Bode Ragdad. And he said the president needs to apologize. I hope the president is not big enough to do that. On that note, to you, our panelists, we want to thank you so much. It is something that we recognize here at this network. People taking up their time to come and discuss, sometimes for an hour and a half and two hours. We know time is money in this country. And for you to have taken your time, to contribute to a conversation that will inform all of us and make our country better. You have shown that you love Liberia. And here, publicly, we want to say thank you for honoring our invitation and doing that. This is our core here. We educate, we elevate, we promote all things Liberia. On that note, I want to say thank you uh, to those of you who follow us here at Focus on Liberia from Facebook and also those of you who watch our program on YouTube. Every program that is broadcast here is uploaded to YouTube and we see that Liberians are going there and watching our program. So subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not done so and follow our broadcast when you miss it. It's easier to find it on YouTube than Facebook because it's have millions of people looking for this video on Facebook. On that note, we want to say thank you and we can't thank you enough for following our program. It is because of you, you we here. And also to you, our guests, it's because of you, we always put this kind of conversation together. Mr. Juru, thank you. Uh, Mr. Williamson, thank you. Mr. Dropo, thank you. Mr. Bolle, thank you. Eva, thank you. And that will do it for us here at Focus on Liberia. And bye-bye, everybody. Steve. We are Abira. Abira is our home. Abira people. Here you may see Abira.